Well, hey, folks, uh, Blake Roberts with the British Columbia Football Conference. I am speaking right now to two of the participants in this weekend's national semifinal, linebacker A.J. Blackwell with the Lion Rams. Say hello, A.J. Hey, how's it going? And quarterback Jake Marquette from the Hamilton Hurricanes out in Hamilton. How you doing, Jake? How's it going? Good. Okay, so you guys can hear me okay? Yeah, perfect. Uh, so I guess, I guess uh, first question um, – how excited are you guys both to be uh, this close to a national championship and playing in an interconference football game? Oh, uh, first, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, playoff football is always exciting. And, like, you know, especially once you win your conference, the, the interconference games get really interesting because, you know, some of the conferences play differently. So that's always exciting to see some new, some, some different football. Yeah, for us, it's like uh... – we don't always get this shot, you know, like we got to work. feels like extra hard. We, we, we don't get as much uh, kudos for anything that we do. It might not be looked at as a hard opponents for us, stuff like that, but it's definitely exciting. And uh, especially this year with the talent that we got, we're ready to come out there and just show them what we got, you know? So it's definitely exciting. It, it's funny, Jake, you kind of led into one of my questions. Uh, I'm just going to talk about the OFC and, and, like you said, some of the attention maybe the conference doesn't get. At the start of the year, um, obviously this is a goal for a team to get this far, but did you guys knew you had a pretty stacked club and were, uh, for lack of a better word, going to have your way with the OFC this year? Yeah, it, it, not so much right away, but as things started to pan out, we kind of seen that we were the real deal in our league, like for the most part, and – kind of knew it was going to come down to us and the team that we faced Windsor in the championship and uh, they battled good, but we made it out of there. But our, our whole season, I'm not going to lie for me, this is my last season. And for the young guys, we got a lot of young guys on our team, but I'm trying to explain if there's anything we can achieve, that's our goal. So there's still more football to be played. So we don't have no intentions of stopping as much as we can. So you had your way with the OFC this year with the teams out there. You actually had a team, um, if I read right, they actually quit at halftime. You guys were up 61 nothing over, I think, uh, Niagara, and they and they left the field at halftime. What was the story there? Yeah, um, I, I don't know the full story. We were just uh, clicking on all cylinders. I think they might have even had a couple guys missing that game, so I think it could have been due to numbers. But, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was how it went. But it, I, I can't just say that our whole league is – like, I got to give some credit to where it's due. Our team is – we got a lot of athletes and we got a lot of good players that have opportunities to shine whenever they get the ball, whenever they have a chance to make a play, and we're going to see it. Do you think um, – and I've been involved – I've been around junior football a long time. I was on the board of the Okanagan Sun for a number of years, and we found sometimes we – our teams had issues where the – they dominated the conference for eight or ten games, and by the time we were ready to play out of conference, let's say the Prairies, we maybe weren't as ready as we should have been. Do you, do you think maybe that will hurt you a little bit when you're? If you've looked at the Rams schedule, they've been in dogfights most of the year. Do you think that could be a bit of an Yeah, that's a good point too. Um, I guess for that um, main thing would be for the people that are here returning for the for the mature players that we do got on the team that have been through anything like this, it's just going to have to be mental reps trying to force it into the heads of all the young players or players who never been through something like this. Like I've been into interconference games. I haven't been to a bowl game myself, but I, I know the difference. Like I, I got to respect everyone out there, both at Prairie, BC. At their, it's a dog fight with, with any team that you play out there. So I got to give the credit where it's due, but I hear your point. I don't think so much for us. I'm not worried, but that is, a, that is a big factor. AJ, what about you guys? Um, I mean, you were in dogfights. I think for maybe the last game of the year, you know, for the most part, you guys were fighting tooth and nail most of the game. What came together the last game that you guys, you know, basically had your way with the sun? Well, I think um, a lot of it was, uh, again, just like speaking to the younger players because, you know, I've, I've been through, like, situations like this and games like this and um you know realizing like getting them to realize like the chance and opportunity that you have and and why you really play why you got to play your hardest because you know 
Um, you play for your seniors, your guys that aren't going to get a chance to strap up again after those after the season. You know, some people might not strap up again. Play for your practice players, the guys that you know they work in day in day out serving you, and they don't even get to dress. And you know, little things like uh, I heard a quote once in my life, and I told them, told a lot of them, uh, you know, there's two great pains in life, man: the pain of sacrifice and the pain of regret. And you, know, you don't want to go without it. But, you know, you've worked too hard, done too like in too long, just to just to lose now. Um. Rams, you guys got off. Your team got off to a bit of a slow start. Was there, was there ever any doubt in that locker room? And I, I think I know the answer you're probably going to say. But was there any doubt? And uh, and at what point did you guys know you were uh, onto something special, perhaps? Um, I can't say there was any doubt for myself. Um, like maybe a couple couple guys, you know, like like doubting their own abilities or something like that, and you know, just not being entirely confident football players. But, you know, we all band around them as a team, and, and that's, like, the big thing. You got to know if you mess up that we got your back, you know, um, somebody else is going to make that tackle. Somebody's going to, and regardless, like, we're all going to be out there the next play making it up. And I don't know if there's a certain point that, like, we realized we, we had something special going. I think we just kind of – we just kind of st started clicking a bit more, playing as a team, and you know we just started focusing, you know, one week at a time, and just rolling like that, one week at a time. Uh, it may have been actually after the Suns game and after that quote, because that, that was a big win for us on the road, and after you know the coach saying, you know, they're not really a playoff team, uh, that a lot of the guys maybe got a bit more angry and took a bit, took that stuff a bit to heart, you know. Well, I was going to leave that one alone. I thought that had been talked about so much. But uh, so was that a motivating factor, you think, what, what uh, the Sun coach said a few weeks back about you guys? Uh, a little bit. Like, it's not – it's obviously not the main thing. But um, I think that game itself – that game itself was a big win for us. We did play them back-to-back. -back, and, you know, it's always – it's it's hard to beat a team twice in a row. That's when, you know, like, that you're – you're mentally there. You're not making mistakes, and that was that was a close, hard fought game. You know, there's we had to force a fumble on on our own goal line as you know, the defense, and yeah, like lots of lots of game changing moments in that. Just about gutting up and and imposing your will. Talking about lack of respect, uh, Jake. You kind of tapped on a little bit ago. Um, out west, they. And I, I don't know if you saw the interview uh, that um, Dama Bassi, he spoke with the head coach of the Rams uh, yesterday. And mm. it's kind of that big brother thing. There's the Prairies up here, little big brother to the CFC, and then the, the OFC, the little brother maybe to the Beast. You're a young guy. Do you, do you know the history of the Ontario Football Conference and a bit of the lack of success? Are you aware of that? I know the history. I know the big gaps and all the – all the sections you want to talk or look at it. I know all the big this many years and this many years, but honestly, if you're anyhow a competitor, I, I'm, I'm sure I could say this for anyone if the if the roles were switched. I, you got to take it as somewhat disrespect to just show. You can tell me that there's any team in, the, in any conference that can just look at us and, and laugh and think, oh, like Ontario Hamilton Hurricanes and, and laugh at the at the matchup and said like uh, we're too talented all around from defense like I think our defense until like the last game let average like seven points a game or two touchdowns or something like that something like we're we're just we're we're very great good team could be great and have the chance to be great so I'm just hoping that we can click on all cylinders and uh, not so much not so much take it as like a revenge on that it's not no one personally but that's uh, take that anger of being looked at as the underdog and uh, run with it. I'm sensing there is a bit of a chip on your shoulder, though. That oh, I'm, I'm always I, – I play like that every game. It doesn't matter if it's – doesn't matter if it's the lowest guy in our division, if it's the highest guy in any other – whether it's – whether we get to make it final and play this big Saskatoon that everyone talks about, you have to look at it at every, same game every way. You've got to be very self-believing and, and go in there and get it done. 
Uh, questions for both of you. Uh, let's start with you, Jake. Um, you've seen Tim and the Rams. Um, what do you take away from what you've watched so far, and, and what has your coach uh, said to you about the football team when you're playing Saturday? Um, I watched a lot on my own. I actually I, – I feel like we're – we're a very almost mirroring team. I like the way that they play, actually, because it kind of reminds me of the way we play. So it'll be interesting. Um, certain things that I might have caught on, I'm sure that they did as well. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I just feel like we both kind of have the same playing style, so it should be a dogfight. I'm ready to go. Okay, what about you? Uh, you know, I've watched a good amount of film myself on them, and – like I, I do agree. They, uh, they do play similarly to us, and you know they definitely have athletes on the field. And uh, at the end of the day, like it's, it's always about you know making as little mistakes as you can, and you know you can never let a team run the football on you. So yeah, they, like they got athletes out there, and and you know, we got to make our tackles and stick them, and you know just play with conviction. Nobody has run the football on the Langley Rams this year. I'd say that. Did you look at those stats at all, Jake? They're a very tough team to run the ball against. I will, I will go check that over. I don't think I, I vividly checked that out, but I will for sure. Okay. Um, speaking of stats, Jake, not, not to give you the Sports Illustrated curse, 22 touchdowns, one interception. That's, yeah, uh, just, uh, that's pretty spectacular. Yeah, it's just been going my way. I got a lot of uh, easy targets to throw to, so they make it. Uh, the stats are just a mirage. They make it a lot easier than it is. We've got a couple of good uh, receivers. I was looking at the stats. We've got the uh, two leading receivers in the conference, and I think your leading receiver is actually the rookie of the year in the conference. Too. Yeah, yeah, Keyshawn Jordan for sure. He uh, he excelled at everything this year. He came kind of out of the blue. And uh, once we kind of linked up, it was just – it's been magic ever since. So we got him and Angus Button, who's a returning guy again, and he's a captain on the team. He always does things you need him to do. And, yeah, it makes it really easy. Your, uh, your, your head coach, uh, Jason Hayes, do you ever uh, – for anybody watching this, Jason Hayes was the um, – I think the 1993 Offensive Player of the Year in the country. I, I, I'm sure he's told you that. Yeah, yeah. Me and me and Coach actually uh, have a good uh, friendship uh, uh, alongside outside football. Play on a men's league team together, stuff like that. So we're always chit chatting about his his stuff that he's achieved and stuff. I try to just beat and knickknack at him, and we make jokes together. It's it's pretty funny. Uh, AJ, just back over to you again. Your, your head coach, Howie Zarin, uh, I think just before the playoffs said you're the best defensive player in the uh, conference. But yet somebody on the outside looking in might not even know who you were because you're, you weren't vocal in the stats, but you were kind of a middle-of-the-pack kind of guy. But once, once Howie said that, I went back and I, I looked at the stats and you always seem to have your biggest games against teams like the Sun and the Raiders. And then, coincidentally enough, the last two weeks – Defensive player of the year, two weeks running. Uh, tell us about AJ Blackwell and, and why you had the kind of year you did. Um, well, I mean, for my overall stats, at least I, I did join the uh, I did join the team a bit later in the season, so I missed the first few games. Um, after that, I mean, I had a really good really good off season myself, and uh, when I was playing with CIS, I was uh, in the top ten leading tacklers in Canada. So um, this this off season, I really just kind of worked on like worked really really hard, uh, dedicated myself to my craft, and and most importantly, I think it's, I I really got my mind right, got got in a really good mental state, and uh, yeah, you know, like as I said before, you know, there's you know, sacrifice and regret, and I'd rather sacrifice than regret. Um. Home field advantage, a lot of it's been talked about uh, this week, obviously. Um, I you guys, you're going to be jumping on a plane tomorrow, flying, I think it's a four or five hour flight with the time difference. You know, it's something that the CFL teams do every week and nobody discusses much, but for a team that's not used to doing this, 
Um, has this been a distraction? Is it something you're excited about? How do you see it? Uh, we're we're a wide wide based team, as in like location of living and stuff. So like where we base our team out of, it's it's a big travel for like some uh, there's a lot of guys on our team who go two three hours just to drive to practice every day through like after work tra uh, traffic and stuff like that, and then the same amount home. So just that type of stuff alone shows that not something like a couple hours waiting to go for the game we've already been waiting for. It's not gonna give us no worries. You got guys, you got players driving three hours to get to practice. That's the eighth. Yeah, I got people that I don't know if you know down here so much, but like way outside Toronto and coming into East Hamilton, it, it it takes especially with traffic is like two three hours. So wow, that's crazy. Yeah, so I don't have I don't think there should be no problem with transportation or waiting on a plane. We're already eager enough. So anybody, what about fans? People coming out. Uh, parents coming out, uh, what kind of support are you going to have with you guys? I'm sure we'll bring some support with uh, whoever can make it or whoever can make the trip down. Um, I, I, myself, I don't know. I, um, my girlfriend and my son might be coming down. If not, I think I have, uh, I think I have some family out there. So I'm going to try to locate them and tell them where the field is and stuff like that. Maybe we'll get some good support though. Have you been to, uh, have you been to BC before? No, I haven't. So it's going to be a good experience. I have friends and family out there I've never even seen. Well, kind of cool. Yeah. Um, AJ, I meant to ask you this uh, right away um, when we started talking about you as a player. Uh, I want to run a name past you and, and talk about him, Marvin Pope. Marvin Pope. I. I I walk around your your uh, when you guys are warming up, and he is one loud individual. Yeah, uh, Coach Pope's uh, Coach Pope's awesome. He uh, he really knows what he's talking about, and he's a character. He's a fun guy to be around, and uh, you can tell that he really cares. You know, um, yeah, like I've I've had seasons times where where it seems like like the coach almost wants to win. Uh, more than the players at times, and and you can tell that Coach Pope wants to win. Uh, like he cares, he cares about his players, and his scheme, his schemes are always on point. It's um, he really does have a good eye for for what's happening and the little details out there on the field. Well, I'm just about ready to wrap up. I was it's always a tough question to ask uh, players in the end of the season's uh, knocking at the door, but for for two guys like you that you're 22 years old, it could be it for you playing competitive sports. I don't know what your plans are next year, but have you, have you thought about that, that it's you know, losing, you're done kind of thing? What's, uh, Jake, what, what's, what's it been like for you? Yeah. Uh, oh, AJ or me? Uh, uh, Jake, sorry, Jake. Okay. Well, for me, it's um, – it's bigger. It, the the picture is way bigger because that your point that you just made. That's like the biggest thing for me. Like for just a self goal is like there could, if I don't go to school, if I don't do something like that, if this this is as for some other people like the last the last straw. You know, it's the last little shot that you have. So obviously, I want to make the biggest impact as possible, and you want to go out with a bang and and just show everything that we thought we were capable of doing. We want to do that as our last year passes. What about you, AJ? Possible last game. Um, you know, uh, my thing is uh, pretty much this. Kenzo. AJ's got his own. He might fart. He's going to do that every time. One second. I thought you were getting, when I asked you with what you being the last game, you looked away. I thought you were going to get emotional on me. You were just worrying about your dog. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's, a, he's a good dog dog. Um, you know, with the last game, in playoffs, Kenzo. In playoffs, you always got to play like it's your last game, you know. And, um, and you know, I, I myself as well, I'm coming near the, the end of my – uh, like I only have one year of eligibility left in uh, CIS football, and this is my last year in CJFL. So, 
Um, you know, it, it's a big one. I'm trying to take a shot as well. Like, uh, I was in the draft this year, and I didn't get drafted, so I hold that as a little bit of chip on my shoulder. As, you know, I'm, I'm trying to – I'm really trying to prove something to myself. Fair enough, guys. I uh, truly do wish you could both win because as somebody that watches junior football a lot, seeing a 22-year-old leave the field with his head down sucks. So uh, best of luck to both of you, and um, – um, leave it on the field. Thank you kindly. Good luck, Jake. Yeah, thanks. Good luck to you too, bro. Thanks for doing the test. No problem. Mm -hmm.